Yeah, I'm back again. And I've been doing this short series that I call Journey to the Cross. And I, I hadn't even put in my little intro into it. I think I want to get a new intro anyway. But I just wanted to get to this right away. And because this week um, is Holy Week. And Holy Week begins, and I did it short. You can look at my past YouTubes on this, uh, just very short. Uh, as we started with Palm Sunday, last Sunday, Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. I got some words on that. Um, and then we go to the temple cleaning, and I shared some thoughts on that. And then, um, actually, we, we kind of stuck stayed in John right now because John doesn't deal with the uh, Lord's Supper. Uh, I have to ask John, why didn't you record the Lord's Supper? But John records that upper room experience. He, he does record the foot washing, which the other gospels don't. Mm. So I hope you check that out. And then we went to the garden. Jesus takes the disciples. He takes us, journey with him, and he takes us to the garden to, uh, he goes to pray. Now, in the other Gospels, you'll read that Jesus goes a little distance. He tells them to stay awake. You know, don't fall asleep. And you see the agony of this prayer that he gives, and you can please read that in the other Gospels. In fact, Luke records he's praying so hard that the blood is coming down from him. I mean, ah. Um, he's praying, Lord, is there any other way we can get around this? Any other way we can do this? But you go ahead and read that prayer. But Jesus knows that let his will be done. Well, I chose to just read. You know, a lot of times we call the Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We call that the Lord's Prayer. I think that's a misnaming of it. I think we call it the Disciples' Prayer. This is how we taught him to pray. But John 17, and I want, really want to encourage you, I read that, and I'm probably not the best job reading it, but read it yourself. Let's put some passion in it. That really is the Lord's Prayer. That's really Jesus' prayer. So read that um, as he prays that in the garden. Read it out loud to yourself. Read it to one another. And if you've done all of that, now you're ready to get to the cross. And read about the trials that took place, the, oh, the accusation. You can read about Peter's denial of Jesus. And Jesus told Peter he was going to deny him three times. And Peter does uh, read all of that. But I kind of want to get us to the cross. You know, he's been whipped. He's been beaten. He's carrying this cross. And he falls and carries it. And, mm, and there on the cross, um, someone recorded this. It was called the seven last phrases of Jesus, seven last words of Jesus on the cross. And this one is in Luke 23, 34. It says this, Jesus is on the cross. He says, oh, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they do. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. Isn't that? Hmm and the agony, and the pain. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. John 23, excuse me, Luke 23, 43 says, Truly I say unto you, you will be with me in paradise. Oh, you got to read the whole message there. Because Jesus is hung on the cross by two thieves, both on the side of him. One thief is kind of mocking him, saying, hey, if you're really who you are, get, you can call your angels, get down from here. You can get us down from here. Do it, you know? You know, it's interesting. Jesus doesn't respond to any of the mockers. He really doesn't respond to that, um, to that um, thief. But the other thief, he says, he says, hey, we belong. We deserve what we're getting here. This is our consequences. This guy's done no, no wrong. And he looks to Jesus and said, Will you remember me when you come into your father's kingdom? You know, he's not even asking to be saved. He's willing to accept his consequences. And I think it's a real repentance with that man. And Jesus says to them, he looks at and he responds to him. He says, this day, this day, you will be with me in paradise. Wow. And then in John 19, uh, 26 to 27, he says, woman, Behold your son. Son, behold your mother. And he's talking to, to his mom, Mary, and John. A lot of times we have this image of Jesus 
hung real high up in the cross, right? Real high. Don't don't put them that high up. He was maybe only about 10 or 11 feet off the ground, not that high up. Mary could have been grabbing his feet, his bloody feet. That was her son. And she's there. Uh, a few days ago, I was on call at the hospital. And uh, there was a stillborn. And the, they called me in to, to be with the mother and the father and family to have a prayer. Boy, that's tough, I want to tell you. Because, you know, I shared with them, you know, that God's got a plan, but this just doesn't seem right, does it? We see, we see our children born. We shouldn't see them die. And here's this mother holding her stillborn little baby. Mm. I said, I, I can't say I know what it feels because I don't know. But I bet Mary knows. Jesus' mom knows. And they apparently knew the story and they're shaking their head. And I prayed with them. Well, Jesus, even in the agony and the cross, he thinks of his mom. He wants his mom protected. So he says, Mom, there's your son. Son, there's your mom. He looks at John. He takes care of his mom, even in the agony of his dying on the cross. Jesus says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? By the way, Jesus is lamenting or he's quoting a Psalms. That's Psalms 22 1. It's right out of there. And, and you know, in a way, God had forsaken him. This is why he wanted this cup taken from him. Because for this brief moment, whatever it is, God, Father, Holy Spirit, they had to turn their back on the other part of the Trinity. And he, and he goes, and so he may be saying that because, God, where are you? Or he's lamenting. His power in lamenting, just as maybe David did that. I don't know, 22-1. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And we feel that at times. I don't know if we always get answers when we lament, but we always get his presence. And so Jesus is on the cross, and he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then Jesus in John 19, 20 said, I thirst I thirst. And then in John 19, 29 through 30, he says, it is finished. It is finished. He yells that out. That is not a cry of defeat. It's a cry of victory. It's saying, God, we did it. This is what God the Father, God the Son, the Holy Ghost, even the beginning, and this is going to be the ultimate plan. And Jesus did it for us. Not once did he, he was tempted in every way by Satan. If he just would have slipped a little bit, he couldn't have been the perfect sacrifice for us all. He had, it had to be one that was sinless. And Jesus never said, oh boy, was he tempted. He was tempted, but he didn't do it. And he's saying, God, we did it. It's finished. We did it. And then Luke has Jesus saying, Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. Get to the cross. This, this is Good Friday. I'm putting this out. I hope you can go to a Good Friday service. I, if not, just read that Jesus' words. Read his words on the cross. Read his arrest. Get, it, get to the cross. I hope you can go to a Good Friday service. It's funny, he says, why do we call it Good Friday? Well, it, was, it wasn't for Jesus, but it was Great Friday for us. For Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proved his love for us. Well, if you've gone through Holy Week, and you've gone through all those events, his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, the temple cleansing, the foot washing, or you can read about the Last Supper, the prayer in the garden. Um, and now, if you've done that and you read about all of his rest and his, mm, and his being nailed to the cross and you hear the last words of Jesus on the cross, you've gotten to the cross. And if you're feeling the agony and you're feeling, ah, oh, I remember doing a Good Friday service once in, at a church and somebody says, well, that was a downer. Well, it is supposed to be. 
you got to get to the cross and realize what Jesus did for us on the cross. And if you're doing that right now, you're going to be ready for Easter. Because as uh, Tony Campolo once said, I mean, his pastor, he got it from his pastor. It may be Friday, but Sunday's coming. God bless. I might even have an Easter message.